Today on the OT, we bring you some of your favorite baseball players from the decorated senior leaders to the new fresh faces. All this and more coming your way. Hello and welcome to the OTA segment of Tiger TV Sports Showtime. I'm Taylor Halsey and for the next 15 minutes we will take an in-depth look into the lives of your favorite Tigers and pros. And kicking things off, the Tiger baseball team is off to an 18-2 start this season and youth is playing a large role. Reporter Ryan Banowitz explains why the only items hotter than the Tigers are the two freshmen responsible for leading the charge. Freshman shortstop Alec Bregman entered LSU with immediate expectations to perform, and head coach Paul Maneri built up the phenom's image early and often. The kid's a ball player. I mean, if you looked up in Webster's Dictionary, baseball player, there's going to be Alex Bregman's picture there. 16 games through the season, Bregman is leading or second in virtually every offensive category, and steadily quieting any remaining naysayers. Transitioning to the collegiate stage rattles some players, but Bregman doesn't seem much of a difference. Oh, I just think it's another baseball game. I just go out there and try and uh, compete. But Bregman isn't the only freshman feeling the Tigers' hot start. Head coach Paul Maneri also struck gold from an unexpected speedy source. I know Mark Laird came in a little bit under the radar for all you guys. Not for me. Laird leads the team in batting average and runs scored and continues to set the table for Bregman and the rest of LSU's big bats. I just try to get on base because I know Sooner or later, they're going to drive me in. Laird and Bregman hit 2-3 in the lineup, and both say they're close off the field as well. While both players are lighting up the base paths, they're quick to defer to the other's talents. It seems like every time somebody's in scoring position, Bregman drives them in. I mean, he's just money and clutch. He's a great baseball player, great person, great friend, and uh, he competes his butt off, and that's what I love to see in a baseball player. Their talent with the glove rivals their accomplishments at the plate. And Maneri certainly appreciates the freshman's contributions to the squad. I don't know what you call it, you know, but maybe we land yet? Okay, it's something extra about those guys. They find a way to beat you. They've passed all the early tests for success, and the Tigers can only hope they carry their hot bats all the way through a grueling SEC schedule. For Tiger TV, I'm Ryan Banowitz. Bregman and Laird meet their next set of challenges this week as they continue SEC play. Now, while the freshmen have gotten off to a hot start, the older crowd has brought their game as well. First baseman Mason Katz has nine home runs on the season, and reporter Matt Smith found out how Katz leads by example. I'm trying to lead, but not, not by just hitting home runs. You know, that's, I, don't, I don't want to try to teach guys to swing for the fence or nothing. Though much of the attention so far this season has gone to freshmen like Mark Laird and Alex Bregman, senior first baseman Mason Katz has tried to set the tone both in the game and out. I try to really more lead by example off of, you know, not during games, you know, practice still every day when things are going good, not taking off when things are going bad, not getting down on yourself. After the first week of SEC play, Katz leads the conference in home runs and RBIs. Katz says he's enjoyed being able to pass on his experience and knowledge to the new players. It's fun to have uh, younger guys come in and look up to you and just ask questions nonstop. You know, I, I love talking the game to anybody. Katz says his past experiences have taught him a lot and it's experience he wants to pass on. Us seniors and juniors as well have been through a lot since we've been here and you know they want to they want to learn what we've been through so they can understand they have a better understanding so they don't have to go through it. Katz has a batting average above 350 and hit three home runs this weekend at Mississippi State including the game winner in the 10th inning on Friday. Head coach Paul Maneri says having senior leaders is crucial to his team's performance. When you have veterans like Rafe and uh, Mason, and you can throw Jacoby and Tyler Ross into that mix as well. Boy, it just makes such a great difference. But Katz is quick to point out how vital his teammates are to his success. They, they've really helped me out. Like I said, they're getting on base in front of me and behind me. You got Ibarra, who's crushing the ball, and Jacoby, who you know has the potential to kill anybody. So, uh, you know, that's been the big thing for me. I've been getting better pitches. Katz says his former teammate, outfielder Mikey Matuk, was a role model to him as a young player, something he hopes he can be to the new players. Going into the outfield, playing, you know, being able to play beside him and then him giving me his number eight, you know, that, that was my huge, you know, idol coming to LSU. Reporting for Tiger TV, I'm Matt Smith. You can catch the Tigers in action tonight at 6.30 when they take on Northwestern State. 
But now the LSU Lady Tigers softball team took on Georgia Southern in an evening doubleheader Tuesday. Rachel Fico led the Tigers to a shutout in the first game of the night. But in the second, it was Bianca Bell who was the hero, as her RBI double gave LSU a 3-2 lead that they would not relinquish. Head coach Beth Serena explained the significance of Bell's impact on the team. I said this before, she doesn't have to get hits to lead us. She just leads us with her personality and who she is. She really sparks us and just her approach at the plate leads us. So when she actually is able to come through, it's even more dangerous for us. You can catch the LSU softball team this weekend for their series against the South Carolina Gamecock. The first game is 6 p.m. Friday at Tiger Park. But stick around because after the break we have so much more coming at you. Welcome back to the OT. Sophomore gymnast Lamencia Hall has been dominant this season, scoring two perfect tens on the floor. But off the mat, she hopes to achieve something more. Reporter Ryan Brumley found out how Hall uses her dance moves to bring people to Christ. For sophomore Lamencia Hall, dancing not only earns her perfect tens on the gymnastics floor, but also serves a higher power. For being able to get to Christ through dancing moves is everything I'm about. So when I was able to give, get opportunity to do so, I took it and ran with it. Hall teaches spiritual dance at Grant Mount Olive Baptist Church to a group of 25 girls <laughs> from ages 5 to 18. High school senior Onyx Joseph says that Hall provides a great role model for her to look up to. She's just so energetic. I love that about her. And she teaches us, like, don't give up, don't give up. even though your knees hurt, your feet hurt, you're tired, keep going. Joseph says Hall's teaching also allows her a unique opportunity to worship. I get to express myself in a beautiful, beautiful way in front of people I love, and most importantly for the person I serve, which is God. Paul says she hopes she can touch the girls' lives just like God has touched her own. Christ is all about ministering and touching lives and touching hearts, and that's what ministering through dance is, is using movements to enable to touch a life or touch a heart to bring more people to Christ. And for Lamencia, no matter whether it's in the PMAC or at a church service, she wants people to know that Christ is everything she's about. Do that each and every time you perform, regardless of it's on the gymnastics floor, regardless of it's spiritual dance here, regardless even if you're at Walmart. You want to be able to have somebody say that there's something positive in their walk, in their talk. There's always encouragement. For Tiger TV, I'm Ryan Brumley. Hall and the rest of the LSU gymnastics team will be back in action this weekend for the SEC regional meet this Friday. One LSU pole vaulter is giving a whole new meaning to family legacy. Our own Sydney Armstrong brings us the latest on one of LSU's most prominent pole vaulting family. Flying high is more than just a passion. It's a family tradition for LSU sophomore pole vaulter Andreas Duplanis. Before going pro in the late 80s, Andreas' father, Greg Duplanis, was easily known as one of LSU's best. And Andreas says pole vaulting was always second nature to him. First pole vault pit was a trampoline, we pole vault onto that. Then we had fishing net filled with uh, foam. So I mean, it was always, he always had like an environment for pole vaulting, regardless if like we wanted, like thought about doing that. We were just doing it in the backyard just for fun. In just his sophomore season, Duplantis is already setting records and even beating records that run in the family. I mean, I passed my dad. I wasn't expecting to do that so early. But he was there. He told me like, in the stands. He was like, came to me. He was like, so you beat me, huh? I was like, yep. But Duplantis wasn't always sure if fulfilling the family legacy was right for him, until his mom realized that with his dual citizenship, he could have an amazing opportunity and compete for Team Sweden. And in Sweden, they just took the top two in the country, which I was at that age. So it was like, Sweden's like, yeah, we'll take you. And then USA was like, we gotta go here and jump, and then gotta make this. When given the choice to either compete for his home country, USA, or Sweden, Duplantis said the choice was actually pretty easy. Oh, it's great. I love, I love going to Sweden and competing for them. It's always like great to meet new people and the team's always really close because we don't, like, USA travels with like 100 and something athletes with like three in each event. We have just like the top in Sweden, so we have maybe 20, 25 athletes traveling, so we all become really close and it's just a really supportive, like, organization. Even with all the recognition, Duplantis' teammates are quick to tell how it really is. It looks like Will Ferrell. Slightly less funny though. Yeah, not funny at all. Yeah. Pretty quiet, isolated. They're just know. jokesters. He's really a sweetheart. Nah, Dre's pretty cool. To women. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm as funny as Will Ferrell, but I'm not 
not as funny as Will Ferrell. I mean, they're obviously not funny if they made that lame joke. For LSU's Tiger TV, I'm Sydney Armstrong. The LSU track and field team has just started their outdoor track season. You can catch the Plantas and the rest of the Tigers this weekend at the ULL Raging Cajuns Track Stadium in Lafayette as they compete in the Louisiana Classic. But don't go anywhere. The OT will be right back after this quick break. Well, that's all the time we have for you today. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest news at TTV underscore sports. But also be sure to tune in this Sunday at 4 p.m. for our very special edition of the Tiger TV tailgate show March to New Orleans, where we will break down the LSU women's basketball team's first round contest against Wisconsin Green Bay. Thanks for watching the OT with me, Taylor Halsey.